Welcome to the Atmosphere Church channel. On behalf of all of us here at Atmosphere, thank you for watching. We pray that this message will touch your heart and change your life. Regardless of what you believe, where you come from, or what questions you might have, you are welcome here. Our desire is to help lead you in experiencing God by following Jesus. If you want to find out more information about us, head over to our website at atmosphere.church. And don't forget to click below to subscribe. Enjoy the message. Hurry is the great enemy of spiritual life. To live the way of Jesus, we have to slow down. But this is not easy in the chaos of our urban digital world. To experience the life of Jesus, we have to adopt the lifestyle of Jesus. Allow his pace and his practices to rule our lives. Hurry will sever your connection to God to other people and to your own soul. Who are we becoming? Slow down, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Live freely, live lightly, and find rest for your soul. What's going on, you guys? Pastor Jim Cruz here, lead pastor of Atmosphere Church, and welcome to another Atmosphere Live. I call you guys our onliners, and so we are so grateful to have you a part of our fam. Last week, Pastor Darren Laws from Brave Church was here as our guest speaker, and man, did he have a powerful word for us. Well, if you are watching on Facebook Live or if you are on Instagram Live, we want you to take a moment and connect with us by leaving us a comment, maybe even uh, highlighting something that you heard God speak to you through today's talk. That is super helpful. And you can start off by letting us know where you're watching from today. Even on YouTube Live, there's a way that you can leave some comments on there. So today, as you saw in that video, we are stepping into a new talk series called Hurry Up and Slow Down. Don't you love the title of that? And today is going to be part one of our series. Now, I have to warn you on the front end, today's talk is going to come off like you're reading WebMD, like you, you've got some symptoms going on, something's happening in your body, you're not quite sure, and so you Google your symptoms. Well, today's talk is going to kind of come off like that. So we don't want you to listen to today's talk without listening to to next week's talk as well. So just consider it as like part one and then it's to be continued until next week, part two, where we're gonna talk about more of this idea of hurrying up and slowing down. So with that in mind, I'm gonna pray. We're gonna jump into this and we're gonna look at this and take a deep dive into this problem that all of us seem to be having together and that is the problem of hurry. So pray with me. Father, I thank you so much for everybody that is tuned in today, that is a part of our online fam today. I pray, God, that you would speak to our souls and change our lives. Lord, heal us from the inside on all the wounds and hurts and things that have just piled up maybe in the season that we've been in, God. I pray that, Lord, there is breakthrough today from today's talk. And I thank you in advance for how you're going to accomplish that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you're with me, smash that like button. Let me know that you are in agreement that God is going to bring some breakthrough today through this talk. Now, I talked about hurry, and this is a problem. This is a problem for all of us. But I, I will say that as I've looked at this subject, and by the way, this book has been an inspiration for this series. The book is called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by an author named John Mark Comer. You have to read it. If this subject really hits you, then I would 
encourage you to go on Amazon or ChristianBooks.com and get this book and read it. Uh, you'll really be blessed by it. Now, my family and I were talking, and as we came out of this whole shutdown COVID season and we kind of got back to our life, things like our pace of life has always been busy. It's always been fast. But I think when we kind of went into shutdown mode and we were all forced to kind of shelter in place and like change the rhythm of our lives, for most of us, it was like a, a great change of pace, like to slow things down and to kind of enjoy our families, not feel compelled and all, you know, in a hurry to go somewhere because we had nowhere to go. But then when things started opening back up, it's like we return to our pace. And, and I think because the pace of our lives changed in COVID, to go back to the pace of our lives pre-COVID felt that much more extreme. It was like we went from zero to 60 in 0 0.3 seconds. And we were all feeling it. And I think as you look at culture right now, everybody's feeling the same way. It's, it's this hurry, 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 go, 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 fast, fast, fast. And it's creating all kinds of issues. And I, I think the, the best place to look to kind of see what kind of issues this is causing is on our roads. It's crazy. I was driving down the 118. I was on my way to the valley. And I was in the middle lane. I was doing, I'm 70. I was, you know, going a decent speed. And I saw in my rear view mirror two cars that were both going really, really fast. And, and they were coming up you know, on me really fast. And one was on my right side, one was behind me. And the one that was on my right side was like just flying past me, probably doing 90. Well, the person behind me thought I was going too slow, gets in the fast lane to pass me, and he's going 90. So he's going 90, this other person in the slow lane's going 90. They're like right there by each other. And this person in the slow lane gets in front of me and then tries to get in the fast lane in front of the other car that was going 90 miles an hour. They're both going 90 miles an hour. Didn't see, uh, one car didn't see the other car. And I almost saw the worst accident probably that I, I would have ever seen. Two cars going 90 miles an hour that, that were so, going so fast they didn't even really see one another. It was the grace of God, I believe, that they did not hit each other. I, and I was bracing for impact because I know I was going to get in the middle of that. But the reason I tell you that story is to me, it, it was a moment of clarity where we are. Like everybody, just hurry, hurry, hurry. We are living in such a fast pace that, that we're all going super fast. We're all like, like in a hurry, trying to get somewhere, doing something. I was at Costco the other day, and I, I had this level of anxiety at Costco like I've never experienced before. And somebody told me now that there's like shoppers at Costco from these you know delivery services, and so they're on a mission to deliver the groceries as fast as possible. And I felt I was there with my cart, and I felt like I was going to get run over by all these people going super fast. I was so stressed from how quickly the movement was with everybody in their grocery carts trying to get somewhere, trying to go somewhere. And it's taken a toll on us. And I think even as Southern Californians, for those of you that live in this area, we can kind of get accustomed to this pace of life. And we don't realize that, that you know, just like our cars, like when, when you, push the pedal to the metal and you floor it and the rpms go all the way over to the we call it redlining your car right like we're we're like redlining our lives so much we don't even know that we're redlining our car because uh, the engine is revved up all the time we don't know any other kind of noise that should be coming from our life well just like our cars are not meant to redline and be pushed that way our lives are not meant to be pushed that way and, and now we're seeing this, all of this kind of fallout of like living our life on, on this fast paced, hurry mode. You know, when we went to Oklahoma to uh, do a wedding for some friends of ours a couple years ago, I, I lived in Oklahoma for a couple years as a high school kid. And my parents were back there. And 
it's the first time I've ever left California and lived somewhere else. And so I'm living in Oklahoma. And I could tell even as a teen, like the level of slowness was so much different than how fast paced Californian life was. Like they even talk slower. But when we went back a couple years ago, I fell back in love with Oklahoma. I was like, I could, I could live here. And it's not necessarily, you know, the, the, the weather or all that, because, you know, I really don't like tornadoes for those of you that live back in the Midwest. But one thing that was super attractive to me was how much slower pace life seemed to be than the pace of Southern California and the redlining that all of us are doing in our lives. And, and I, I'm telling you right now that we don't even realize we're living in this so much all the time that we don't even realize what it's causing our lives, like what, what it's doing negatively to our lives. I saw this meme. I had to show it to you. Uh, it says, I'm retired. I was tired yesterday and I'm tired again today. <laughs> I'm retired. You know, we feel tired constantly. Some of us, we wake up and we're constantly tired. Our mental health is, is taking a hit. Our, our well-being as a whole is taking a hit. Here's some signs that your life is living in hurry mode. This is uh, what psychologists call the hurry sickness. I like to call it hurryitis. So here, here's some of the things that may give you some signs that you are suffering from hurryitis. Number one, moving from one checkout line to another because it looks shorter or it seems faster. Have you ever done that at a grocery store, at a department store? There's a line, there's like, I'm gonna go get in that line. Here, here's another sign of hurryitis in your life. Counting the number of cars in front of you and either getting in the lane that has the least or is going the fastest. How many have ever come up to an intersection and you've premeditated what lane you're gonna go in because you know that that lane is gonna be faster? You see the big truck with the trailer, you're like, oh, no, I'm getting in the other lane. You may be suffering from hurryitis if that's to you. And then multitasking to the point of forgetting one of your tasks. I mean, we see this so often, like people texting on the road. Uh, how many of you have had to honk your horn uh, at somebody at a red light because they're like lost, they're multitasking, they're texting while they're driving, and, and which is not good, right? And, and you know, talking to a friend or whatever. Um, so if you're multitasking to the point where you're forgetting tasks, you might be suffering from hurryitis. Uh, in, in John Mark Comer's book, uh, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, he gives some, some symptoms that you may be suffering from hurryitis. Here's some of the symptoms that kind of indicate that you may be suffering from this. Number one is irritability. Uh, you get mad, frustrated, or just annoyed too easily. Little things irk you. People have to tiptoe around you. Uh, your ongoing low-grade negativity, if not anger. For this, don't look at how you treat a colleague or a neighbor. Look at how you treat those closest to you, your spouse, children, roommate. This is where you tend to be nicer to the stranger than you are to your own family. So irritability really shows up with the people that you're closest to. Number two is hypersensitivity. All it takes is a minor comment to hurt your feelings, a grumpy email to set you off, or a little turn of events to throw you into an emotional funk or ruin your day. Minor things quickly escalate to, ma uh, to major emotional events. The point is the ordinary problems of life, this side of Eden, have a disproportionate effect on your emotional well-being and relationship grace. Here's number three, restlessness. When you actually do try to slow down and rest, you can't relax. You give Sabbath a try. You hate it. You read scripture, but find it boring. You have quiet time with God, but can't focus your mind. You go to bed early, but toss and turn with anxiety. You watch TV, but simultaneously check your phone. Who's with me? All right. Number four, workaholism. Or just nonstop activity is another way of saying that, right? You just don't know when to stop, or, or worse, you can't stop. Your drugs of choice are accomplishment and accumulation. Now, I'm a three on the Enneagram, so I'm an achiever. And so this one bites me in the butt so much because I'm just driven. 
How many of you that are driven out there, achievers, that like this is like you, you don't even know how to stop because once you like get this done, there's three other things that you're just like ready to go and ready to accomplish. The result, you fail to uh, pray to you, you fall to pray to sunset fatigue, whereby days you have nothing left to give to your spouse, children, or loved ones. They get the grouchy, curt, overtired you, and it's not pretty. Okay, number five is lack of care for your body. Now, this is just you're neglecting your own physical uh, being. Uh, you don't have time for the basics, eight hours of sleep a night, daily exercise, healthy, home-cooked food, minimal stimulants margin. You gain weight, you get sick many times a year, regularly wake up tired, don't sleep well, live for the four horsemen of the industrialized food apocalypse, caffeine, sugar, processed carbs, and alcohol. I, I don't know, as I'm reading this list, like, are any of these symptoms resonating with you? Probably more than likely they are. And I, I didn't give you his complete list. He goes on to give some other ones. But just for the sake of time, I, I just thought I would give you five of them because, I mean, I look at these and I'm like, yes, that's me. Honestly, if I'm going to be really transparent with you guys, this whole series is for your pastor, really. So if, if it fits with you, great. I'm glad you and I are in the same company right now. If, you, if some of you that are looking at this, like ah, that doesn't apply to me. More than likely, you don't live in Southern California, or maybe you are really retired. You have not a whole lot going on. I don't know. But I do think that if we really look at this, most of us are in this category, and we're suffering from what I call hurryitis. And it's, and it's caused, really, think about it. There's, there's three main causes of hurryitis. Number one is overcommitment. And, and many of us suffer from this, that we, we don't, we don't see the impact. When you say yes to one thing, you're really saying no to something else because time is finite. So you can't increase time. And so if you're gonna give your time to this, you're actually taking time away from this. And so a lot of us, we're overcommitted. We're overcommitted at our jobs. We're overcommitted with the kids and their activities. We're overcommitted even with some church activities. Like overcommitment really creates this angst of hurry uh, in, in many, many ways, shapes, and forms. Here's another one is digital distraction. This is true for all of us. And I, I will tell you that our phones, you know, with connected to all kinds of things, not just texting and emails, surfing the web, apps, the whole nine yards, like all of that is distracting. How many of you got, have gotten on your phone to do something, but then got on your phone and you saw a notification or you saw a text and then you, you get in there and you respond to the notification or the text and we're like, why did I grab this thing to begin with? And it's creating this angst, like there's always something to be done, always something to be looked at, always something to be discovered and, and known about, right? Digital distraction. And here's the third thing, and that is consumerism. We work more so we could buy more. And, and think about that. Like even in this age of, uh, you know, the credit card and, and everybody has a credit card these days and, and it's there because they know for a, a small minimum payment per month, you can have what you desire. And a lot of us, we have too much stuff, stuff that really, honestly, we bought a few years ago. It's in the closet somewhere. Worse than that, we bought a storage locker uh, or rented a storage locker to store the stuff in that we don't even use anymore. So consumerism has driven this pace of life because we feel the need for more stuff. And it's something that we need to look at. And here's why this series is probably the most important series that we've done at Atmosphere in a while. Because hurry is a murderer. That's right, I said it. Hurry kills more stuff in our life than we really have looked at and paid attention to. Think about this. Hurry, it kills relationships. Think about that. The first thing that, that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, love is patient. Love, so, so to really get into a meaningful relationship, right, it's going to require love. And, and hurry doesn't have patience. So when you're in a hurry, it's going to be hard for you to have and cultivate healthy relationship. It kills wisdom and creativity. I, I will tell you, wisdom and creativity, it takes time. 
You, you got to get quiet, right? To, to really get that discernment, to get those great ideas going. And, and hurry comes against that wisdom. It comes against that creativity that needs that space of silence and solitude in order to process the decision or, or to think of the great ideas. It kills compassion. It murders compassion. Think, think like we're such in a hurry that even if God were to like give us an assignment to go help somebody, we look at our schedule like, God, I don't, I want to help some, I don't have time to help somebody. And worse than that, we're in such a hurry, we don't even see the need that the person has because we're so self-absorbed because our schedules are too full. It kills compassion. It kills gratitude and appreciation. We're such in a hurry that we haven't paused long enough to appreciate the things that are working for us. I will tell you right now, some of you have been so discouraged lately because you are so focused on all the things that are going wrong in your life and you haven't paused long enough to thank God for all the things that are right in your life. Right now, Lord, show us something to be grateful for that is in our life that we haven't recognized because we've been too busy to pause to think about. In Jesus' name. Right now, just thank God out loud, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, say, God, I want to thank you for my family. I God, I want to thank you for my health. God, I want to thank you for my job. I God, I want to thank you for the relationship that I have with you. What are you thankful for? See, hurry kills that gratitude and appreciation. And finally, most importantly, it kills a thriving life in God. I, I want to just kind of go off here for a second and, and stay with me. I'm frustrated, not just as a pastor, but as a man of God, that I, I'm trying to live my life fully devoted to Jesus. But hurry comes against that, that whole mantra and, and that whole desire that I have because it's trying to constantly steal me away from my power source. Our power source as people of God, as followers of Jesus, is found in our relationship with God. And I'm going to get more into this next week, but there's so many people that are settling for a half-hearted relationship in God. But yet they're frustrated because they don't see the God stories. They don't see God working in their circumstances and through their circumstances. Because here, you will not experience God if you're half-heartedly giving yourself to God, the God stories flow from a person that is fully devoted and wholeheartedly following Jesus. That's where the God stories flow from. And hurry wants to kill that. And we'll kill that if we let it. I like some of these quotes. Dallas Willard, who actually inspired the title of John Mark Comer's book, he said this. He says, hurry is the great enemy of spiritual life in our day. You must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. What's even more telling about the problem of hurry when it comes to our thriving life in God was a recent survey of 20,000 Christians around the world. It revealed uh, that Christians worldwide identify busyness and constant overload as a major distraction from God. Dr. Michael Zigar Zigarelli who conducted the survey from his post as associate professor of management at Charleston University School of Business, describes a vicious cycle prompted by cultural conformity. He says, quote, it may be the case that, number one, Christians are assimilating to a culture of busyness, hurry, and overload, which leads to, two, God becoming more marginalized in Christians' lives, which leads to, three, a deteriorating relationship with God, which leads to, four, Christians becoming even more vulnerable to adopting secular assumptions about how to live, which leads to five, more conformity to a culture of busyness, hurry, and overload, and then the cycle repeats all over again. D do you see the issue here happening? Like culture is in hurry mode, and we've been called by God to go against culture and not to conform to it. Um, I, I really will say that it, it hurry comes against everything 
that the Jesus life is here to give us. It's incompatible. Uh, this um, Dr. Zigarelli goes on to say, quote, the accelerated pace and activity level of the modern day distracts us from God and separates us from the abundant, joyful, victorious life he desires us to have. Think, think about it this way. Some of you that are familiar with different passages of the Bible. You know, in Galatians chapter five, it talks about the fruit of the spirit. Like somebody that is like diving into a deep relationship with God. It says the fruit of the spirit of God working inside of you is love, joy, peace, patience. And it goes through this list, right? Of like the characteristics. It's not an exhaustive list, but I think it's a, it's a really telling list that, that God is moving in your life. How do you know God's moving? You have love, you have joy, you have peace. Think about it, just like not the whole list, but think about the first three out the gate on this list, love, joy, and peace. They're incompatible with hurry. You, you can't be living in love and in joy and in peace when you're living with hurryitis. They're incompatible and it's time that we identify this. Corey Ten Boom, who went through an incredible life, um, Holocaust survivor, and just an incredible testimony of, of God showing up in, in powerful ways for her. She said this in, in uh, her life. She says, if the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. Now, we talked about spiritual warfare in the last series, and, and I want to tell you something about your thriving life that God wants you living with him in is that the devil is going to come after you and the biggest way he will come after you is with distractions to pull you away and he will use busyness and hurry as a way to pull you from this thriving life that God wants you to experience in him. I like what John Orberg, one of uh, John Comer's uh, mentors, he said this, he says, to choose to live an unhurried life in our day is somewhat like taking a vow of poverty in earlier centuries. It's scary. It's an act of faith. But there are deeper riches on the other side. I love that quote. So what's the remedy? The remedy is slowing down. How many of you have heard the expression, slow for the cone zone? Now, if, if you want one of these, I can, I can send you one. But I got these uh, for our in-person gathering tomorrow because I, I want I want everybody uh, to be able to have one of these uh, to really reflect on the idea of like the cone represents you need to slow down. So I th I think all of us like need one of these cones. <laughs> maybe we put it on our dashboard, right? Uh, maybe we put it on our nightstand next to our phone. Uh, maybe you put this on your office desk so you can can be more aware that hurry is really antichrist for your life. Think about it that way. Like we, we talk about the antichrist coming, like where's the antichrist? I think the antichrist is already here and fully present in our world and his name is hurry. Think about it in that way. So there's a story that Jesus gives or actually, it's not a story that he gives. It's, it's really a story that he experienced. And there were these two sisters that were a part of his life, Martha and Mary. And we read about this in Luke chapter 10. And what I love about Luke chapter 10 is that Martha is experiencing a spirit of hurry. She's suffering from hurryitis, and she doesn't see it. Jesus calls it out on her because she's trying to take her hurry and put it on her sister and Jesus says, mm -mm, you, you need to get rid of hurryitis and become more like your sister. This is what it says, Luke chapter 10. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that uh, had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. This is what Jesus says, Martha, Martha. When Jesus uses your name twice, look out. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, 
or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Wow. So Jesus, in essence, was telling Martha, slow down. It was the late theologian, Japanese theologian, Kazuke Koyama. And he wrote this book in the late 70s called (laughs) Three Mile an Hour God. And three miles an hour is the average speed of somebody walking. He said this, he said, God walks slowly because he is love. If he is not love, he would have gone much faster. Love has its speed. It's an inner speed. It's a spiritual speed. It's a different kind of speed from the technological speed to which we are accustomed. It is slow, yet it is the Lord over all other speeds since it is the speed of love. It goes on in the depth of our life, whether we notice it or not, whether we are currently hit by storm or not, at three miles an hour. It is the speed we walk, and therefore it is the speed the love of God walks. And another passage in the New Testament talks about living in step with the Spirit. Well, let me tell you, the Spirit of God is not in a hurry. And I, that's a word for somebody right now. Can I, can I just tell you, maybe I'm the first one to ever tell you, God is not in a hurry. We want God to show up yesterday. God, I need an answer yesterday. And, you know, sometimes it's in the waiting that God gives the biggest revelations to us. So sometimes slowing down is the most powerful thing that can happen for our lives because that's when you live in step with the Spirit of God. I'm speaking to somebody's heart, man. I feel it. So, hey, let us know. Like, that's for me. Just smash that like button again. That is me, Pastor. I, I need to know God's not in a hurry. And um, here's some great tips. Just, this is like, part two, we're gonna get into the practices of Jesus to really move us in, into the cone zone, right, of our lives. But I, let me just give you some just basic things. Again, these are some great tips uh, to help in, in all practicality, like how to slow our life down. Number one is make time for quiet. Make time for quiet. Some of us, we're, we're racing around with the alarm clock and it's just like we're, we're waking up tired, but you gotta make time for just, just no noise, no distractions, no phone in your hand, just away. Maybe it's outside, maybe it's in your car, maybe it's in your bathroom. I, I have something that I realized even in this deep dive that I've done myself and just like slowing down over the last month is I was thinking for the longest time that there was something supernaturally powerful about being in the water, like in, in my hot tub or in the shower, like I have the most amazing inspired ideas. Like I could tell you God's story after God's story of things that God revealed to me while I was showering or while I was in my hot tub, I was like, God, there's something about the waters. It's not about the waters. It's those spaces are when I'm not distracted and I'm, and I'm letting my life get quiet. And it's been such a breakthrough for me because the more quiet I become, the more God inspired I'm going to live. So get quiet, make time for quiet. Number two, do less. There are things, let's be honest, there are things that we don't necessarily need and again i don't want to be redundant but you can't add without subtracting so you can binge and and totally watch some netflix but it comes at a cost the cost is somewhere maybe it's your relationship with god maybe it's your relationship with your family but i i know you know i the struggle is real you are one episode and then the next episode's on there uh it it's it's a real challenge but do less Look at your schedule. What what can you do without? Number three, own the now. Man, this is so good, especially for you warriors out there. Some of you that just struggle like, what's going to happen? Like, what are we doing next? And you're always living in the future. And the problem with living in the future, it was twofold. Number one, you don't know what the future holds. And so if you're a pessimist, you're always thinking the shoe's going to drop. And so you're living in this constant angst of what if, right? But number two, as long as you're living in the future, you cannot enjoy the present. So I want to just give us the directive, own the now. And you can't even live in your past. The past is terrible too. The past gets you into this this place of of, um, 
just guilt and shame and regret and it's just like I shoulda, coulda, woulda thing. But we got to leave that too. Own the now. There are things God is doing right now. Celebrate and own the now. There's stuff God is doing right now in your life. Just focus on that. Even Jesus talked about that. Don't worry about tomorrow because today has enough trouble of its own. Come on, somebody. That's a word. Okay. Number four is disconnect. I don't know. Disconnect from media. Disconnect uh, from a lot of the things. Uh, I was reading his book. He challenged uh, everybody to like delete email from your phone. And I was like, I never thought about that. But just disconnecting because when we're always connected, it's, it's it causing this anxiety to raise up. And I'm not saying anxiety is caused by hurry. But I will tell you, your anxiety is growing in your hurry. So you, you may suffer from anxiety for all kinds of reasons. We don't have time to unpack that. But hurry is actually the fertilizer that is that is amping up the anxiety that you have. So you got to know that. So disconnecting can remove a lot of that. And number five is focus on people. How many have been in a conversation over the last month or two where somebody grabs their phone right in the middle of you talking to them? I mean, I'm guilty. I've done it. Like, you know, sometimes it's important. Like, I don't care who I'm meeting with. My wife calls. Like, I want to find out like and I even gave her a ringtone and a vibration like on my phone so I know it's like a heartbeat like that's your wife but but I'm trying not to practice that because think of how insulting it is when you're talking to somebody and that phone becomes more important than you and, and so let's let's like put our phones away and like pay attention more to the people that God has put in front of us in the moment right uh, and here's the next one is appreciate nature I, I looked at a, a study that was done 15 years ago. This is so clarifying. I've got to land the plane here. But the idea is 15 years ago, this study was done, and they connected a rise of atheism to the invention of the air conditioner. This study blew my mind because I was like, what in the world? So as we went indoors, our belief in a creator declined. So think about the power of nature. When you're out, when's the last time you saw a sunrise or a sunset and it just blew your mind and just like, even in like the, the biggest doubts of your mind, like, ah, there's no God. Like you look at that and you're like, there has to be a God. Like, wow. And like, how many of you have been in nature and your breath has been taken away by a scene that you were in front of, not on Instagram, but like live in person. You're like, what? Like the, the, perfectly blue ocean of the Caribbean or the amazing uh you know landscape of the Sierras it's just like oh my goodness get outside I'm telling you it's gonna help slow you down and just appreciate it and it's gonna raise your belief in your creator in God all right here's the uh last two is eat slower man Tara has called me out on this so much, my wife. She said, like, you're a vacuum cleaner. You know, I, I have lived, because my life in the last 10 years has not been good. I, I will tell you, the pace that I have been living, like my life in God has been good, but the pace I've been living has not been healthy for me. You know your life is too busy when the only food that you have time to eat is a, a a place that has a window that you can grab it and eat it while you're driving. That has been my life. And, and thankfully, I see light at the end of the tunnel. But this fast-paced, crazy, hurried life will put you in a place where you will eat the wrong foods and, and you will eat too fast. Like your digestive system suffers. And um, It was just a couple years ago, I, I had something removed my, from my colon that was uh, precancerous. So... My colon has taken a hit, I think, because a lot of the foods that I've eaten and how I've eaten them. And then the last one is you drive slower. And this is probably a, gr a great point to end on. And the best thing I could have ever done is put that love sticker that I showed you guys a couple weeks ago on my cars. Best thing I could have done. Man, it, is, it has helped me with accountability like nothing else has ever helped me with. Because I, I'm the guy, I'm in a hurry. So if, if I can get around a slower car, I'm going to do it. But I'm like, oh, I'm going to check myself because I, if I get over in front of that car and they're like, what's this guy's doing? It's like, blah, period. It's like, 
you're going to get mad uh, you know, at me and, and give a bad witness for God. So honestly, I've been doing this. I've been purposely staying in the slow lane, even if I'm like going under the speed limp behind a diesel, because I've noticed that it's actually healing for me. It's, it's forcing me to slow down because I believe that there's a part of me that's a little broken, if I can be honest with you guys. And I think in slowing down on the road, it's, it's helping my soul heal and get back to the pace that God wants and has called for my life to be. He's a three mile an hour God, not 90, right? So we got to check ourselves. So as I land this point, remember, stay tuned for part two next week. It's so, it's more important than even us diagnosing the issue here. But here's two homework assignments I want you to do, all right? Yep, you came to church, you're getting homework, all right? So number one is, here's the first thing I want you to do this week. Pay attention to your life this week and catch yourself when you're in hurry mode, when you're, when you're seeing hurryitis pop its head up in your life and write it down, journal it down and, and write it the moments like, wow, I, I, I was aware of it 10 times today. Maybe at the end of the day, journal down like how many times you felt that angst and like that hurry and that busyness and the overwhelming sensation. And then number two, cancel something. I don't, I don't know what you have scheduled this week, but I'm going to do this too. I'm, I'm going to cancel something, my schedule. Cancel it. People are going to be able to live rescheduling that appointment with you. Something, the world is going to keep on spinning whether you make that appointment or not. Tomorrow, if you drop dead, here's the reality check. This world is going to keep spinning and people are going to keep living. They, they, they'll pause and be sad that you're gone but they will move right along. And, and that, that's kind of like sobering, isn't it? But think about at what cost are you paying to be in such a hurry? It's one thing to cost you a relationship with your family, with your spouse. Man, it's not worth it when it costs you a thriving life that God wants you to live in him. So let's think about that and let's pray that we live in the cone zone and get slower. Pray with me. Father, I thank you, God, so much for this word. I know it's a little bit longer talk today, God, but I pray that, Lord, you would bring us into your speed, that you would help us, God, by your Holy Spirit to slow us down so that we can be in step with you, so that we can live in this thriving life that you've called us to live in with you. And my prayer is for anyone that is watching today that is far from you God and while everyone is praying maybe asking God to show you what what part of that that you need to really hone in on this week I want to speak to any of you that are watching that are tuned in and you don't have a relationship with God at all and I believe God sent you here to this broadcast to this online talk today to call you out and to call you to a relationship with him. He wants you to thrive in life, not just survive in life. And the way he does it, he's, he gets on the inside of who you are. And what he's asked us to do is he's invited us into this relationship that we believe that Jesus Christ died for us. He paid the penalty of sin for us. All the failures and mistakes we've made in our life. He died. He was crucified so that he could take all of that on himself so we could be made right with God and have this relationship with God again. So I want to invite you into the same relationship that I stepped into 30 years ago in my own life. And, it's, and it simply starts with the prayer of inviting Jesus to come live in you and to invite the Holy Spirit to, to have his way in, in your life. So pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I give you my life today. Thank you for dying for my sin and for forgiving me and, and giving me this relationship with you. I pray that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit today as I step into this relationship, this thriving life that you have waiting for me. Lord, let me move at your pace and to slow down and enjoy the life that you've given me to live. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, congratulations, we celebrate with you and we wanna connect with you. We ask that you just text the word follow 
just the word follow to 805-334-8700 and we will send you some other great resources and just partner with you uh, in, in this amazing new relationship you have with God. So with that in mind, hey, let's worship God and let's slow down. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message has spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be a part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you? To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.